Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl were bad games, is what the majority of the Pokemon community says. So what makes Pokemon BDSP the most controversial Pokemon games? In order to answer that question, we have to go all the way back to the beginning. Before we get started though, I just want to thank you guys for reaching 10,000 subscribers. This is just the start to our journey and I can't wait to see where this channel goes. The date is September 28th, 2006 and Pokemon Diamond and Pearl released selling over 17 million copies. These games were a massive success. They were the childhood games for anyone growing up in the mid 2000s and it's a Pokemon game that you can look back on and reminisce about the nostalgia you felt as a kid. But that nostalgia can only last for so long, and the older Pokemon fans grew up. But with the release of the remakes of Diamond and Pearl, everyone was expecting these games to hold the same standards as they once did in 2006. Newsflash, they didn't. Well, these games took a turn for the worse, getting the most backlash that I've seen from any other Pokemon game. So, where did it all go wrong? Fast forward 15 years and Pokemon Diamond and Pearl were rumored to get their long-awaited remake, and the news broke out that Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl were the names of the new remakes. As you can expect, everyone was super excited for these remakes. Finally, Pokemon and Game Freak listened to the community and gave us what we wanted. The last remakes we got were Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, which I don't really know if I can count them as real remakes. Prior to those remakes, we got Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. It's important to note that Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire are highly respected remakes. They were done extremely well and kept the nostalgia and fun aspects of the game. But it's a personal opinion whether or not a game is considered good. The wide majority of the community considered Oras to be a good remake, but the majority of the community thinks that BDSP are not. There is a slight few that really enjoy these games, but I just wanted to point them out before anybody starts fighting in the comments. There probably will be anyways. But besides Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire being great remakes, another example of some very well done remakes are Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver. These remakes were so well done that it was hard for any other remake to come close to how good these ones were. It added the ability for all 493 Pokemon to follow you, the ability to catch almost every single legendary from past games, and almost the entire storyline of Pokemon Crystal, just to name a few. And this was a lot. Especially for a Pokemon remake, this was what everybody asked for and more. While Pokemon Pokemon BDSP did add the Grand Underground Super Contest limited character customization and the ability for Pokemon to follow you, which didn't really work too well. It was disappointing to say the least because some features we would have thought that would have been added were not added. Like Giratina's story at Spear Pillar and the Battle Frontier. Even though this was Pokemon Diamond and Pearl and not Platinum, Ilka decided to add contents of Pokemon Platinum into these remakes, which doesn't make sense because why wouldn't they add Giratina's storyline? So why did these remakes lack so much content? What the majority of the Pokemon community suggest is Ilka. Ilka was the company that decided to develop these remakes, hence why we got the chibi art style. The experience they had working with Pokemon before BDSP was Pokemon Home, which is just a Pokemon software and not a full-blown game, especially one that everyone has been waiting for like Diamond and Pearl, which doesn't make sense to me why the developers decided to hand this project over to Ilka, but another reason might be because they decided to push these games out as fast as possible because it was approaching the holiday season. If you look at Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver, these games were huge, and most importantly, they were compatible with other Generation 4 Pokemon games. One thing Pokemon BDSP did not have was compatibility with any other Pokemon game on the Nintendo Switch, which makes it sorta a one and done type of game. And keep in mind, when these games came out, they were announced alongside of Pokemon Legends Arceus, which was released a few months after. And once Pokemon Legends Arceus came out, it left BDSP in the shadows. Looking back at the performance of BDSP, it was not that bad. They held their frame rates pretty well and the game did not lack or fall behind. Comparing that to Scarlet and Violet, well, at least we could walk around the game without having any FPS drop. We still can't overlook the amount of glitches these games had though. It wasn't perfect and people could tell, especially in the ice gym. That glitch was just embarrassing. Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver didn't have any performance issues, but those games came out on the DS, so it makes sense. And Oras on the 3DS only had specific performance issues, which weren't too bad. But for a game like Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl to be released in 2021, it just feels like these games were released too fast and pushed out as fast as possible, causing a lot of these glitches, which shouldn't be happening in 2021. But don't worry, it's 2023 and we're still having performance issues in Scarlet and Violet so nothing's changed. Improvements. Despite the performance issues that BDSP held, they did make a substantial amount of improvements. I know that I can't be negative this entire video, so I gotta show these games some sort of props. They improved the speed in which you travel. For anyone that's played the original Diamond and Pearl, I know you guys can tell me how annoying it was to travel from place to place and it taking years. Or when you knock out a Pokemon and it takes 60 seconds for the health bar to drop, yeah, that was really annoying. Pokemon BDSP officially released events like 
Shaman, Darkrai, and Arceus, so we don't have to rely on glitches to obtain them anymore. Platinum only forms like Skyform, Shaman, and every Rotom form were accessible for everybody, and getting rid of HM so we don't have to enslave more Bidoofs. But I still don't understand why Ilka kept certain aspects of Pokemon Platinum and didn't just make a remake entirely of Platinum into a new game. It would have given us way more content. Look at Pokemon Renegade Platinum, the remake for Pokemon BDSP on the Switch. This game completely shows the potential these games had, and they were made by a bunch of developers that were fans of Pokemon. Keep in mind, these were unofficial games. Imagine what the real Pokemon company could have done with these games if it was done like this one. This ROM hack was everything all the fans wanted out of BDSP. They added all the events from Pokemon Platinum, new Pokemon, and even a mod for true to size Pokemon. How can these developers create a better game than Game Freak? There even was a fan-made trailer concept that went through what the remakes would have looked like if it was done in a 3D open world style, similar to Legends Arceus. These trailers amazed me. Seeing Gen 4 in the current art style blew me away and this is what the remake should have looked like, instead of those ugly chibis. I believe that Game Freak is out of touch with the fan base, and they don't actually know what we want from a Pokemon game. They had 10 years to get it right and they still messed it up. Oh, and speaking of Legends Arceus, Game Freak has made some good calls. Creating Pokemon Legends Arceus in an open world Pokemon game was what everybody wanted, but it was not executed correctly. And going back to the fact that Legends Arceus and BDSP was released very close to each other, it felt like Legends Arceus took the spotlight and didn't give BDSP much time at all. So it seems hit or miss whether or not Game Freak actually listens to the Pokemon community. Future remakes. Okay, let's talk about the future remakes and what they can do to improve so we don't get another disaster like BDSP. The next remake down the line is Pokemon Black and White, and people are scared with what Game Freak might do with these games. I made a whole video talking about this, so check it out if you guys haven't. It'll be linked up here. Pokemon Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire is a good example of a well done remake in current generation. The art style was that of what we got from the latest generation and made everybody happy to see their beloved games in the current art style. Character customization is something that every game moving forward needs to have. It's a feature that makes the games more enjoyable and gives us a sense of being unique. The Generations gimmick. The new gimmick would give us a fun way to play and battle. It would also spice up the competitive scene, making it more relevant. Adding a post game in Legendaries would be essential for new remakes moving forward, since that is something Oras had and made them really great games. I think working for your Legendaries and obtaining them make it even better. But that's what I wish for in these new remakes going forward, but you guys might have completely different tastes. Maybe you thought these games were the best remakes we've gotten so far, but in the end, it all comes down to nostalgia and how we felt as a kid playing these games. A lot of people can say these games lost their charm or just fell off, but that's up to you guys to decide. If you guys enjoy this video, make sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more of these videos like this in the future. And please, no more chibi art style.